so you can search for people and you can also search for actions so anything that you want to dive in you can search for individuals also and you can go to their particular record and look at them so this is the search option this icon is the home option okay and this is the one where you have your favorites and your recent items so based on your navigation the recent items will get gradually built up okay last we went to the global order promising so that is what is showing here favorites you can add your own favorites here add and manage so whichever screen you go to and then you can add that to your favorite so if you see here right now fsm and search person is there suppose i go to purchase requisitions from here and i say add to favorites so this will get added to my favorite okay okay so if this is shop and i can add a new folder here also so let's say purchasing or procurement or something like that seven close so when i go back to this i will see it under purchasing this is the option that got created earlier it was not there remember that okay so in this way you can also manage your favorites in case you don't want anything you can go back and delete it as well suppose i don't want this so you can just highlight and then delete it will be gone after that next to that icon this uh, favorites and recent you have the watch list watch list is basically things which require your attention so from the modules to which you have been given access what are things that are pending action so you have things like receipt batches or validation errors or unapplied receipts so all these are there defined in the application and you can uh, choose them as per your need okay and uh, you can let's say you want to go and check or you want to look at the unapplied receipts that are lying there or anything that requires your attention like new total compensation statements or disputed transactions so you can just click here and the system will take you to that particular set of transactions and so if we don't fill any field in particular uh, module so it will show automatically it is based on the roles that you have and the modules to which you have been given access okay. next to it this is the bell icon bell icon is the famous uh, bell icon where you can see the notifications and uh, show all will show you all the uh, notifications that were there in the system so when you click on all you will see other things that are there created by me assigned to me okay so when you do any changes when or when you are applying for let's say leave or you do any person related changes salary changes or assignment changes then you can um, just go and uh, you know see all that information over here okay and anything that needs action you can see the details and based on that uh, you can take appropriate action so maybe i can just sign out and sign in through another user and show you how it looks
signed in as a person called Curtis Fetty, who is an HR specialist. Okay. And if I go to the person's notifications, uh, show all. Oh, here also nothing is there. Let me look at the work list. Work list basically has everything, including the history. So all the data, all the notifications that have come in the past, all of them are shown here. Task review or offering activity or compensation insights. All these are have come in the past. Okay. You can see like this was Jan 22. This was February 22. And these were assigned. And if you open any one of them, Okay, so what is the tax name? Request a workspace. Who is the performer? Who is the owner? Required, initiated, when was it started? What is the due date? And things like that. So URL here, if you click it, it will take you to that particular task and uh, give you the details where, which building or which floor and things like that. These are the actions that you can do. You can add a comment, you can add an attachment, you can mark as complete and things like that. Okay, these are the filters on the left. These are the my tasks. These are things that started. These are my staff task, administrative task, or views which are like due soon, which are coming up. You know, maybe future dated ones in the next one week, two weeks, nothing is there. Any high priority ones, anything that came past week, past month, past quarter. So when you say past quarter, only those in the past quarter are appearing. So these are the ways in which you can filter the um, notifications that have come in. Now, if you want to look at the application details, if you once you click on this small arrowhead here next to the user ID, if you scroll down, there is this about this application. Can you see this about this application? So when you click on this, you will see the versions, right? So this is 11.13.22.01.0. This is the full application version. It uses Oracle application development framework. This is the technical uh, front end that has been used to develop the screens. These are the middlewares. And this is the database compatibility that is the back end. It's a release 13 database that is being used. And <clears throat> another very important place that you should all know is the one related to the application help. When you click on application help, it takes you to ideally it uh, it's right now playing up. 
it's not opening up. It will take you to docs.oracle.com. Okay. So that is like, I would, I strongly recommend to everyone to use docs.oracle.com as your first point of reference. Whenever you are stuck with something or you, you need to know more information about a particular feature, uh, go ahead and use that. I will show you that docs.oracle.com. Okay. And um, that is the that is the authentic source, you can say. There are a lot of blogs, YouTube channels, and things like that relating to the applications. Those are all things which are from an individual's perspective, right? So what I have done, I know about it. So I create a blog or I create a YouTube video or I create some uh, pages writing about it, but that, that may not be, may not give you the complete picture or may not be the, uh, you know, the full perspective of that particular feature. To get the full thing, you have, you should always visit the docs.oracle.com. That is my recommended place. Everything is given and in very and in a very well written, simple to understand language. So if I click on this use here, you will see everything related to the product. Okay, using common features, scheduling processes, troubleshooting users, issues, employment, hiring people, everything is given here. Okay. And we don't understand anything, so we can just directly, you know, yes. uh, check into this and uh, yes. follow the process. Yes, just read up. My suggestion is, and that's what we as consultants do, right? Oracle mm -hmm. keep releasing new, new features. Yeah. So once something comes up, we come here, read about it, or go to the Oracle support site, read about the feature, or when we are stuck, you know, something is not working. The other advantage of this site is if Oracle says something will work, it should work. If it doesn't work, Oracle is there to support you, right? And you can raise a, a some service request and Oracle will take care of it. There are some nice videos also here, which are very short and to the point, and uh, they are not in great detail or uh, they are not too many, but you know, small, and to the point kind of thing. So you can see this. Are you able, are you able to hear the sound? Yeah, I can. You can? Okay. Yes. Hello, my name is Tanya. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to get started after signing into the application. I'm using the application link my company gave me to open the sign-in page. I'll enter my user ID and password to land on the home page. Here's how the home page looks with the default speed layout. In the app section, I can use the work area icons to get to specific work areas and do my tasks. And I can go straight to some key tasks by using the quick action section. If I can't find the work area icons I'm looking for in the apps section, I'll look for them in the navigator. The navigator is in the global header, which I can find on every page in the application, including the home page. The navigator contains all the work areas that I have access to, arranged in specific groups. The same groups in the navigator also appear as tabs on the home page. Let's look in the others tab, which shows a collection of unrelated work areas that aren't in any other groups. For example, the getting started work area, which is where I can see videos and other materials that help me get going in the application. Now let's take a look at some key tasks that we can do in the global header. Using the settings and actions menu, I can do some general tasks, such as set my accessibility preferences, and set some other preferences, such as language. I can troubleshoot problems if I run into these. 
the options I see in this menu depend on my role. For example, if I were an administrator, I would see more options to configure the application. I can use the search to look for what I want to work on. Whichever page I'm on, I can return to the home page using the home icon. I can use the favorites and recent items icon to bookmark pages. This part we have done, so I can skip this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. So this is yeah. the application help and whenever in future you're stuck or you want to learn anything, understand a new feature, my advice is go there. The other place is uh, if you go from here, we have the setup and maintenance. Okay. So this takes you inside uh, the application setup. Okay. The back, back end or the back side of the application which end users usually do not get access. Only super users or people who need access to the setup will get access to the setup and maintenance. Over here, you have these actions. The application, the screen is divided into, this is called as the offering. So you have the compensation management, you have the financials, grants, customer data management, manufacturing, order management. So these go by the different products. Within the offering, you have the different functional areas. Okay. So for each functional area, you have other set of tasks that are coming here. So by default, the required tasks are displayed. If you click on this, you will get all tasks. So here you can get a complete list of tasks. And for each of them, you can get here through the actions. You can look at the documents. You can do a setup data report where you can view all or you can do an export. You can do an import. You can export to CSV. You can import from a CSV file. You can compare the setup data. Okay. So for example, if you want to look at the documents here, click on view documents. And it gives you the list of setup tasks and lists and tasks. You can take it in Excel. You can do an HTML. You can do a PDF. In an Excel, if you were to do it in an Excel, you can keep track by saying, OK, what are the setup tasks that you have completed? OK, what are the setups required, whether it's required or not? Let's say I look at the HTML one. So this is the HTML document that has got generated. So it shows you each of the tasks here, what task type, what description, product, product family, and whether it's required or not. You see this required, yes means it's mandatory, you have to do this conditional and uh, business object and all those things are mentioned here. Okay, for each action you have this option. So you can directly download this in an Excel as well, and then keep track of the different activities that you are doing, which one is done, not done, who has done it, and things like that. You can add more information once you have downloaded it. Okay. And on the side, you have these actions here again, which are similar. This is for the entire offering. These were for individual functional areas. This is for the entire offering. So similar to what you saw here, these actions. Okay, you have the same things over here. So export, import, and implementation status. Go to offerings. So when you go to offerings here, for each of the offerings, you have an option to choose. Okay, what are the things that whether it's enabled or not, and whether it's what are the features that have been opted in. So for example, if you want to go to compensation management and check this, you can see the opt-in features. Okay, so these are features have been enabled. Some of them you can disable also if you are not planning to use it. 
but if you want to keep everything on, just keep them selected, enabled. Okay. And uh, on the side here, you see this task icon. This is the task button. So once you click on it, it will draw out here. You can also do a search within this particular offering. So suppose I want to do a search for, let's say enterprise, and it will show me all the tasks that have the word enterprise in them. Probably got my stuff a bit. So I have this enterprise here. So once I search for this, it will show me all the tasks with the word enterprise in it. So whichever one I go to, it's easier for me rather than hunting around through each and every functional area. Okay. And here on the side, this is the task button. Once you click on it, this is the draw. So you get additional options. This search that you have here is only within this particular offering. Whereas if when you click on this search, it will take you to the search and within all the offerings. So if I do a search here enterprise, I will get more number of options than I got there because it is searching through everything within the application. Okay. Any questions? There is a manage implementation project which we will uh, see in the next class. Okay. okay. So that um, you know we see this and then we will get started with the application part of it. That's what I wanted to ask. So basically, when we implementation starts, right? Uh, uh, how do we? Uh, select this implementation project or not? Uh, usually, see all these years, we didn't have an implementation project as such. This yes. implementation project is something that has been introduced in Fusion. So this is uh, more like keeping track of the activities that you do within the application. So you can assign these activities to individuals. You can track which one has been completed, which is pending or which one is yet to be done and things like that. So other than that, this one doesn't do what else we do in an implementation. Okay, for that probably a project plan or a you know MS project is a more appropriate tool to keep track of all the activities inside or outside the application. Because in an implementation project, there are a lot of things that you do outside the application. So whenever the implementation starts, see, I never started with adding mm. implementation project mm. or not. Mm. So when, whenever I work, right, I always start with directly with the task. Mm. So I get a little confused at times. How does the start of a project happens? Do we do? We, is it mandatory always to use the uh, uh, implementation project the same way task and add those tasks? No. It's not mandatory. No. It is there to help you keep track of all the activities. Okay. Mm. Because in a major project, what happens? There are so many team members who is doing what and things like that. It becomes mm. a bit, uh, you know, too over, uh, you know, overreaching to keep track of everything in a MS project. So this is there just to help 
uh, the users to keep track of things. Okay. Okay. So, shall we stop here today? Yes. All right. Uh, Shivani, you might like to stay back for a couple of minutes so that I can walk you through what you missed out. Yeah. Okay. okay I'll drop, sorry. So yeah. tomorrow seven thirty again, right? Uh, do we do it tomorrow? Yeah, we can do it tomorrow or we can do it day after. Are you okay tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. Let's start. Yeah, okay. Fine. <laughs> okay. 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 We'll meet sorry. tomorrow. Well, just one request. Yeah. Uh, if possible, let's be all like can we start on time? Because I have uh, meetings starting at 9 30, so it becomes difficult yeah. for me. Okay, so yours is morning hours, Sandeepa. Pardon? So yours is morning hours, your work started, sir. My work starts at 9.30. Before that, okay. I have to call, so and all those affairs are there. So, okay. so 7.30, if we can start on time, it will be good for all of us, if it's possible. Yeah, sure. Okay, we'll get started. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. See you all tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, the same link will uh, uh, yeah, access. Uh, same you. link, or I'll send. I'll see if we can get another link, and I'll share that. Otherwise, we'll use the same link. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Okay. Um, Shivani, how did it feel? Was it a bit too overcoming? No, no, it's everything is fine. So obviously this is the first class. So overall, uh, you know, as we move on, we'll get to know more, right? Because this is completely new for me. Exactly, exactly. So yeah. my request to you is don't feel overawed, okay? Don't mm -hmm. think that, oh, it's all going over my head and all that. Initially it will, <coughs> but once you get into the application, you will see that you know these are the things that we all do and these are the terms and terminologies that are used very specific to the you know to the application right so application to application these terms often change okay. so let me yeah, just because only yeah, by cool. using application itself, uh, you know, I'm getting to understand more clearly, actually. Exactly. More you practice, even beyond the sessions that we do, more you practice, you know, on your own, better, you more comfortable you will get with the application. Okay. So let me just quickly fill you with the, the recording will be in the recording, it will all be there. Uh, so, but... I just wanted to walk you through. So this is a fully integrated ERP application where you have the different modules. What it essentially means is it's all installed in one single database. So, okay. So you have everything in one place and you have workflow running across the modules. Okay. So workflow is that notification that I was telling you where you get somebody has applied for leave or somebody has approved the leave or that information to and fro is controlled through the workflow. Mm -hmm. And these are the different set of modules that you have within the application. So you have financials, HR, supply chain, projects, uh, procurement, CRM and all that. And each track or each suite of modules consists of multiple modules within it. So we don't always try and know everything, but we try to just do a bit of, you know, whatever is there, you know, the essential, like we start with core HR, compensation, payroll. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's all we will be doing. Rest of it we will not be doing because not all customers do everything. Okay, so they pick and choose what they need and what they don't need. One other important uh, piece is the governance, risk and compliance. Nowadays, um, there's a lot of emphasis on uh, IT compliance, right? So this is uh, ERP provides a separate set of modules where compliance 
related things are taken care of. And then we talked about uh, the software. There are two variations. One is called on-premises. Another one is called software as a service. What is on-premises? On-premises means you have the entire application installed on your own server, on your own machine. Okay. And software as a service is you just need a user ID and a password to access the application. Rest of it is taken care of by the vendor. You must have been using Excel nowadays. You can see Excel has an online version also, right? Right, like Google Sheets. For Google Sheets, you don't need it installed on your laptop. All you need yes, is a Google ID and you sign in and go and work on the Google Sheet, Docs and PowerPoint. So that is the SaaS part of it. But earlier we had to install the Word or the Excel on your desktop, right? So that is the on-prem part of it. So you need a desktop, you need to install it and data and all that is your headache. Mm -hmm. So when we say you manage, you manage meaning customer managers and other managers means the vendor managers. So other meaning in this case, it is Oracle, which is the vendor. Okay. okay. Now, this was a short history of what has happened in the ERP space, um, which led to Fusion actually. Uh, Oracle application has been in existence since 80s, 1980s. In 95 onwards, it has come to India versions 10.3, 10.5. R11 was the internet enabled one, e-business suite it was called. It was a big hit and it became very popular. R12, release 12 came around 2007, 2008. And Oracle had bought PeopleSoft around 2002, 2003. And PeopleSoft had acquired JD Edwards before that. And Oracle bought Siebel around 2004. So by 2005, Oracle had four big ERP products in the market, okay? And uh, Oracle merged all of them and called it as Fusion. And uh, Fusion is available in two flavors. One is the on-prem, another is the SaaS. Now, the way the product has been uh, designed is there is a global core product, okay, core set of tables, features, which are available irrespective of whichever legislation country is implementing it. And on top of it, they have the local reporting, statutory rules, cultural processes. Okay, so for example, we have GST in India, there is VAT in UK, there is sales tax in US. There are separate legislation uh, rules, regulations for China, Japan, Germany, France. So each of them rides on top of the core product. Okay. And this is the on-prem cloud comparison. I think you had joined at this point, right? Yes, exactly. So on-prem so using it. Sorry? Oracle comes under or Oracle comes under cloud and SaaS, right? Actually, there are two two uh, flavors of the product. You can get it in on-prem also, and you can go for cloud or SaaS also. On-prem is very costly because everything is your headache, right? Mm -hmm. So Oracle discourages customers from using on-prem also because one, it is very costly for the customer and entire management of the infrastructure, software, maintenance is their headache. But in cloud, what happens? Oracle takes care of everything. You just pay for the user license and you start using it. You configure it and you start using as per your need. So small and medium-sized companies can also adopt cloud or SaaS. That's why it has become so popular, all these cloud applications. Yes, 
okay yeah so from here onwards you were present so you saw this one also right did you see this no 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 i i the go one slide this one so you probably joined here right yeah yes okay okay so what this means is on the on prem model what happens the entire database is accessible by us meaning we the users so you can anybody with proper access can access the database so you on top of the database you have the operating system then you have the middleware and then you have the front end which is the user interface so once you connect to the database you have all the details all the uh, full access to the database you can create tables you can update the data and all of that but in cloud model what happens is you have access to an enterprise you don't get access to the back end you can only read the data and if you have to update anything in the database you have to follow the tools or you have to follow the programs that oracle has provided there are ways to update the data but you have to follow the tools and the programs given by oracle you cannot do any other ways so there are restrictions in the database update you can read the data through the application remember here multiple enterprises are using the same database okay so slowly like when i signed in to the application that is my access to the particular enterprise <clears throat> i don't see any other enterprise it's like once when we do online banking you get access to your account i get access to my account even though we might be with the same bank right so you don't you don't see my data i don't see your data kind of thing so here also enterprises all their data may be stored in the same database but they don't see each other's data okay and these are the different uh, software options that is where you joined us mm. so when we will get uh, you know uh, login credentials to the applications where we can track some in after how many classes i can i can give it to you right away not an issue <laughs> because we haven't done much so that's why mm -hmm. if you want i will share it with you not an issue you'll know like uh, when it has to be shared so that there is a yeah yeah so you see bra what i showed you today you can just sign in later on in the day mm -hmm. and just navigate around na? that will build your uh, familiarity with the application yes sir okay 